Alright, here we go. What is going on, guys? It is Caleb, and today we are going to learn a little bit more with arrays. Um, we are in our arrays and objects in JavaScript, so um, continue where we left off. Last video, which was just a little review. Today, we're going to learn arrays don't only contain numbers, they also contain strings, booleans, or even other arrays. So, Hopefully we won't get into dimensional arrays, and which we might even do get into dimensional arrays. I don't know. I should probably start go ahead uh, covering the material ahead of time so I know what I'm talking about. Most of the time I'm just like going through it and reading it and winging it, and hopefully I get it correct, which nine times out of ten I do get it correct. Usually the only time I get an error is a gram grammar error, which is unfortunate because I can't type. Um, anyways, so... Heterogeneous arrays. Now that we reviewed some array basics, it's time to cover a little new ground. First, it's not necessary for you to put the same type of data in an array. For instance, you don't have to have var pronouns equals array i u e var numbers one two three. You can have a heterogeneous array, which means a mixture of data types, like so. Var mix equals the number 42, uh, number 42, a boolean of true, and a string of tau. So as you can see here in JavaScript, it allows us to integrate different um, variables within our arrays. So we can have strings, booleans, doubles, and so forth all in our array. Now the instructions are to create a heterogeneous array called my array. And as you can see, I already created one, so I'm just going to go and reset my editor with at least three elements. The first element should be a number, the second should be a boolean, which is a true or false statement, and the third should be a string. Feel free to add more elements to or of any type if you like. So, um, once again, the create array, my, you, or you say var to create a variable, and then our array name is going to be my array. And we're going to equal the first block, and we're going to give it a number, so there is a number. And then we're going to give it a true or false statement, and we're going to say true, and then we give it a string, um, and that's just something random, a lot of key strokes. So if we go ahead and click run, we get it correct. So let's move on. Arrays of arrays. Oh, no. So here we get to go into dimensional arrays. So good. The next thing to know is that not only can you put a mixture of types in an array, you can even put other arrays inside arrays. You can make two-dimensional arrays by nesting arrays one layer deep like so. And yes, this can go up to like two, three, four, five, and so forth, all the way up into different dimensions. Or dimensions. There, um, th so an example of a two-dimensional array is, well, the very first slot has an array, and what it's saying is um, normally this is this is a two-dimensional array right here. So, like the very first slot in our two-dimensional array is in another array that has two numbers, uh, two data slots, and then the second slot in our two-dimensional array is another array which has two data slots within that. And a way to think about this is kind of like um, if you were to have like little crates stacked on top of each other, kind of kind of like a spreadsheet. Now, if we will have our spreadsheet. You know how we have the columns and we have our rows. That is the same exact thing as two-dimensional arrays. Um, you can also have like a three-dimensional array, as you can see down on the bottom of our spreadsheet. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with um, Microsoft Excel, but you have little tabs at the very bottom. Now that can represent or um, replicate three-dimensional arrays because now you have more spaces within that space. So um, hopefully you can kind of grasp the idea of why, or not not, not why, but what a two-dimensional array is. And this array is a two-dimensional array because it has two rows that each contain two items. If you were to put a new line between the two rows, you could log a 2D object, for example, a square, to the console like so. And this is what we would get if we were to log this out into the uh, console. So it wants us to create a two-dimensional array called new array in the editor. It should have three rows and three columns containing any data type you like. 
So, hopefully we can get this correct on the first try. Um, var my array equals little block, and it wants us to have a three rows and three columns. And as you can see here, this is going to give us two rows and two columns. So, I'm thinking that we just create another array and just be like, yo, one, one. And let's do one again, and then we can be like uh, another array, one, one, and one. And now uh, if we were to give that, I think that should give us our two rows and three columns, right? It should have three rows and three columns. Uh, shit. No. No. Go back. Back to the editor. Need another array. And then if we were to have something like one, one, one. Okay, that should be our three-dimensional array. Oh, no, not Skype. No. Did you declare a variable called new array? Didn't I, didn't I declare a variable new array? Oh, I did my array. New array. Oh, uh, array, array. There we go. There we go. Okay. Like I said, the only time I ever get errors is with grammar. So, um, I hope, hope you guys caught that. It was, um, yeah, it was three rows within three columns. So, it was pretty much one array, and then within that array, you had three slots. Within those three slots, you had an array, again, with three um, data slots within that. So hopefully you caught that. If you didn't catch it, go back and um, pause the video and copy it down. Um, array, like multi-dimensional uh, multi arrays aren't the funnest thing to work with, but you have to deal with them whenever you're using JavaScript and programming. They, they definitely come in handy once you understand them. Um, so, great work. That's a fine looking multi-dimensional array you got, got, or that you got, that you've got there. Blech. Yours is nested once, so it's a two-dimensional array. But if you really wanted, you could put arrays inside arrays inside of arrays for even more dimensions. Sometimes you want arrays that aren't as nice, and even as your 3x3 three three two-dimensional array, you might have the three elements in the first row, one element in the second row, and two elements in the third row. JavaScript allows those, and they are called jagged arrays. Create a jagged array called jagged. You can place whatever you like in it. The only requirement is to have at least two rows, that is, the first two elements need to be arrays, and those rows cannot be the same length. So, hopefully we'll get this correct. So, jagged, make sure we name our name or our array correctly, and it wants us to create two arrays within here. And then it wants us to have different lengths within these arrays. So we can say like one, two, three, and then we can just have another range for like one and two. So if we submit our code, we got it correct. Hopefully you guys caught that. If you didn't catch it, like I said again before, um, go ahead and we want re rewind the video a little bit and pause it. Um, so that was a jagged array, and the jagged array just means you instead of having um, three rows within three um, three rows like within the two columns. You have like a row that has three rows, and you have another column that only has like two rows. So hopefully you caught that. So we now we have a mid lesson breather. So well done. So far you've reviewed arrays and how to access an array by offset array properties and irritating or irritating over arrays. We've we've also learned about heterogeneous arrays. We've learned about multi-dimensional arrays, which aren't fun. And we've also learned about jagged arrays, which are pretty much just multi-dimensional arrays, but they're different lengths of a, a they're different lengths of arrays within the array. So take a minute to reflect on what we've done so far. Then, when you're ready, click Run to learn about our last and most powerful data type called objects, which are awesome. And um, I'm sure you guys can't wait till we get to learn about those. And to so pass this, just go ahead and click save and submit the code, and congratulations, you finished. So, we got the green light. So guys, if this, if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like. Um, leave a comment down below if you get stuck. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing a couple comments on the uh, multi-dimensional arrays. Um, 
yeah, just leave a comment if you ever get stuck. <laughs> uh, don't forget to subscribe, guys. Peace.